Hi there. Uh, as we speak in June 2020, most economists believe that a further fiscal stimulus will be needed to prevent the UK economy experiencing a depression and mass unemployment. So in that case, the concept of the fiscal multiplier becomes an important part of the debate. So let's take a few minutes to think about the economics of the fiscal multiplier. Well, first of all, what is the concept known as the fiscal multiplier? Well, the multiplier effect is when there is a change in either government spending or taxation, which has a bigger, wider effect on the economy. And technically speaking, the fiscal multiplier estimates the final change in real GDP that results from an initial or exogenous change in either government spending or perhaps a change in their revenue plans. So what is a simple numerical example of the fiscal multiplier? Well, let's take a situation where, for example, the government increases flood defence spending by, let's say, £5 billion, pounds, some major capital infrastructure projects. And let's say that the estimate is that then leads to eventually a £12 billion final increase in real GDP then we would say that there has been a strong positive multiplier effect. The final change is 12 billion. The initial change was 5 billion. Divide one by the other and you get a multiplier effect of plus 2.4, which is actually quite a high figure for a multiplier effect. So what is the possible significance of a high value for the fiscal multiplier? Well, it's important to put things in the context of the current situation. Here we are in the summer of 2020, with the UK economy already in recession and the IMF forecasting that in 2020, uh, the level of national output may well fall, uh, the size of the economy may well contract by more than 10%. So if the fiscal multiplier is high and positive, then perhaps a well-timed, perhaps a targeted fiscal stimulus could be effective in helping to lift demand aggregate demand, production, factor incomes and ultimately jobs, particularly as the economy tries to rebound from a deep recession and downturn. Uh, GDP, of course, measures the value of goods and services produced in the UK and it estimates the size of and growth of the economy. Here's the latest data, including the first quarter of 2020, where GDP fell by 2% in just one quarter. And according to estimates, uh, the level of national output fell by more than 10%, 10% in the three months to April 2020. Of course, that was due to the shutdown, uh, our restrictions on movement, and during lockdown dramatically cut the size of economic activity. So the economy is clearly shrinking and unemployment is rising very sharply. This is the claimant count up to 2.8 million in the, in the spring of late spring of 2020. Some economists fear the return of mass unemployment and less effective stimulus policies are introduced. Well, there are lots of options in terms of potential fiscal stimulus policies. I'm going to focus on three in uh, today's video. One would be to lift the size of government infrastructure spending, that is capital spending on things like new, new roads, bridges, schools, hospitals, We've mentioned flood defence. It could also include, for example, infrastructure spending on new social housing. The UK government has, in fact, a UK national infrastructure strategy, which uh, plots £100 billion worth of capital spending. The government might decide to bring that forward by, by a few months, even a few years. Another possibility <clears throat> from a fiscal stimulus point of view is that the government could decide to cut the standard rate of value-added tax, which is currently at 20%. So, for example, they might decide to cut VAT uh, to 15%. Big question, of course, is would a cut in VAT actually work? Would it, would, it, would it apply to the whole economy? Or perhaps would they target it to certain industries, certain sectors only? A third option, which is being mooted by many economists, is to bring down the rate of employer, employer national insurance contributions. Employer's national insurance is a payroll tax. Uh, every time you employ somebody, you have to pay national insurance. Cutting that could help to reduce the cost of employing people and perhaps mitigate the fears of a big rise in unemployment in 2020 and 2021.
Well, what determines the size of the multiplier effect? How, what factors might influence the overall uh, coefficient of the fiscal multiplier? Let me uh, suggest you, well, there are many factors, but let me suggest you five uh, evaluation points. So this is a classic example of how you could use the phrase, the size of the effect depends on. First of all, how the stimulus is financed. Is the, finance, is the stimulus financed by an increase in government borrowing? We know the state is already running a, a big budget deficit this year and national debt's going up. <clears throat> is the government prepared to borrow more, another 10, 15, 20 billion pounds, for example, uh, to finance the fiscal stimulus? Uh, typically, of course, the multiplier effect is bigger if you do that than if you, if you raise taxes in the near term to, to help fund the extra spending. Second point is the extent to which a stimulus actually leads to higher interest rates and perhaps higher inflation. So if the government is borrowing more to fund infrastructure spending, does that increase the cost of uh, the market interest rates in the bond market? And does that lead to increased costs of borrowing for firms and businesses, which could dampen the effect of the multiplier? Does it lead to an increase in inflation, which would reduce the real incomes of households, for example, and again, reduce the, the size of the multiplier effect? A third factor is the degree to which an economy is open to imports. You see, if we have a highly open economy, if the government is spending more on housing, for example, or new bridges and hospitals, it could be the case that many of the component parts, the raw materials, perhaps the capital goods, may come in from overseas. It depends on the propensity to import. And of course, imports are a leakage from the circular flow. Typically, a highly open economy tends to have a lower fiscal multiplier because a large chunk of the stimulus spending uh, tends to go in imports. Crucially, the fourth point is really important. The extent to which a stimulus by the government, a credible fiscal stimulus, has a positive impact on consumer and business expectations and confidence. If it does, oftentimes a stimulus can be reinforcing. People think this policy is working, confidence and expectations improve, and that in turn can then increase spending in the wider economy. And crucially, if you know your formula for the multiplier, the effect of a fiscal stimulus does depend on the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save of, presumably, millions of households affected by the policy. The marginal propensity to consume is defined as the change in consumer spending after a change in our real disposable incomes. I've given an example here. Income goes up by £2,000 and I increase my spending as a consequence by £1,400. The marginal propensity to consume here is 1400 over 2000 which is 0 0.7. The higher is the marginal propensity to consume, the greater, other things being the same, will be the size of the multiplier. One of the ways you can explain the fiscal multiplier analytically is to use, of course, an aggregate demand and supply side diagram. Now, crucially, the multiplier depends on the extent to which a country has spare capacity. In other words, is there a negative output gap where GDP is well below its potential? If that is the case, then an increase in government spending, for example, could shift out aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2. And you can see here that you get a quite a significant increase in real GDP, but without there being significant inflationary pressure because aggregate supply in this diagram has been drawn as elastic. Indeed, if the rising government spending kickstarts higher consumer spending, for example, and perhaps an increase in investment, then you might get a further knock-on effect. And this is the kind of diagram you would draw if you wanted to emphasise the potential for a large fiscal multiplier effect. And that would help the economy increase GDP from Y1 to Y2 to Y3 without there necessarily being a big inflationary risk. Loads of policies you can think about. We talked, uh, we mentioned three. A little bit of evaluation here. What about increased infrastructure spending on new roads and bridges and social housing? One key argument in favour is it's going to create thousands of you know, like shovel-ready jobs in the construction industry, the building sector, and in many of the supply chain industries. If you think about the derived demand, for example, for bricks and cement and glass and steel uh, to help complete projects. Infrastructure spending can be positive for both aggregate demand and also the economy's supply side capacity. 
One of the potential drawbacks, however, is that many of these projects uh, suffer delays and significant cost overruns, particularly if uh, there, is, there hasn't been sufficient cost-benefit analysis of the viability of a scheme. Uh, cutting VAT is a, is a really important potential stimulus policy. If you reduce the rate of VAT, currently 20%, that in theory reduces prices and increases the real income for consumers. And indeed, you may well target a cut in VAT, for example, to help tourism and hospitality. So you might say, right, there's no VAT if you book a hotel room, for example, in the UK. Or there's no VAT on, on film and theatre tickets, for example. <clears throat> so you could target specific sectors. Again, a drawback, potentially, is it's not really the level of prices that drives consumer spending. A, a small percentage cut in VAT probably wouldn't have much impact on price. It's jobs, it's not people in work that really is the main driver of household spending. It may well be the case that cutting income tax, for example, especially for poorer families, might be a more effective policy. And what about cutting employers' national insurance? Interestingly, employers' national insurance is the largest single uh, non-wage labour cost that most, empl most employers face. I was reading that it's about if you employ somebody on the average wage of around, let's say, £25,000 a year, it costs about £2,500 to employ those people in terms of the national insurance cost an employer has to pay. So cutting that would reduce the payroll cost for firms and in, in theory help them to keep more workers employed and therefore keep unemployment down. That said, it's a very expensive option for the government uh, to cut national insurance for all workers. Perhaps a more targeted stimulus could be more effective. Consider, for example, a cut in national insurance if you employ younger workers or perhaps a, a national insurance holiday if you spend money on retraining, for example. Either way, there are arguments in favour of each of these fiscal stimulus policies and uh, relevant um, limitations. Uh, a couple of points just to finish with. The multiplier effect, we talk about the size of the fiscal multiplier and we talk about it being plus one or plus 2.5 or whatever. And it's easy to say, of course, uh, the multiplier effect doesn't happen instantaneously. <clears throat> it takes at least one to two years, perhaps, to show through. And it's also very hard to isolate the impact of any particular single fiscal stimulus on the level of GDP. The thing about macroeconomics, as I'm sure you know, is there are so many moving parts, so many things can change, shop and change at any moment in time. So isolating the impact of, for example, £100 million spent on new housing or £500 million on school building is particularly difficult. The evidence, for what it's worth, having read some of the papers, is that the fiscal multiplier for government investment tends to be larger, other things being the same, tends to be larger for a similar size of tax cut. In part, that's because people would save a tax cut, whereas, for example, an increase in government spending directly targeted on new house building, for example, or improvements to hospitals, uh, is an injection into the circular flow uh, of, a, of a certain size. There we go. Uh, hopefully that was a, a useful and uh, clear explanation of the fiscal multiplier. My instinct is you'll be talking about this concept a lot in the next few years as we emerge out of the COVID-19 crisis. So thank you very much indeed.